Welcome to another fun-filled episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome aboard. Welcome. I don't know why I say The Wave like that. All as, as if it's one word <laughs> rather than two. The Wave. The Wave. The Wave. The Wave. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you do that either. I don't know why. It sounds good though. The listeners like it. It's sure. Both of them. Great. <laughs> good to know. How's things, Nick? Back. Yeah, excellent. Yeah? Good week? Uh, Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. We've got a bit of sunshine. That's nice. Yeah. It's been quite just, all right the last couple of days, isn't bit. it? Just a tiny little bit. But yeah, no, things are, things are pretty good. Good. I'm glad. How about you? Got a new laptop. Good. You see it? It's massive. Yeah, it's it's got a dragon on it. Yeah. Looking at me. <laughs> uh, looks quite... So yeah, I've spent quite a lot of time... Posh. I don't know. When you get new laptops, you spend sure. a lot of time trying to make things work on them. Yeah. And it's taken me quite a lot of time to make things work. Okay. But yeah, it's good. I enjoy it. I can play games. Excellent. It's what good. game are you going to play? Um games <laughs> i don't know i've not decided yet <laughs> I, I need the group burrito boys to recommend some good game pass games solitaire yeah what, both of them that's what the kids are still doing <laughs> minesweeper definitely <laughs> what was is that the one where you have to press in the buttons the numbers come up yeah you, yeah maybe i will have a go at that <laughs> live minesweeping <laughs> there's some quality podcast content right there <laughs> So we it's all we do first quality podcast quant- content. We can have the first bottom of the stream minesweeper championships somehow. Somehow live. Yeah. Put, put it on put it Discord on or YouTube, YouTube or, or something. Yeah. Good start. Okay. <laughs> Solid start to the show. <laughs> <laughs> We've had an idea within the first one minute forty three seconds. Great productivity. <laughs> have you got any gossip for me? I have I any gossip. I don't think I've got much gossip. No. How about what's happened in my life um, in the past seven days? I can't even... I'm struggling to remember what I did two days ago. That's the problem. Ah. I might have done something last weekend. You you had one <laughs> daughter less last weekend. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Because <laughs> she went on... One went on holiday. She had a brilliant time. Good. Did lots of... She did climbing, abseiling, raft building. It was an adventure holiday. Yeah. Fell in a lake. Fell in a lake. Well, off the raft. It's kind of what you have to do, isn't it? Yeah. Can she swim? Yes. She can now. Yeah. I've do, I could just come from swimming <laughs> oh, have you? To, to be here. Well, yeah. you don't look wet. Well, I, I didn't swim. No more than usual. <laughs> I, I think I might be by the end of this because I, I am feeling a bit of a bead starting. Yeah, it's quite warm in here. It does get warm in this room. This boat is quite. But for sound purposes, we have to keep locked down. Yeah, shut, we shut do. in. Windows shut. Right. We should probably draw the blind because the sound probably echoes off the glass, but I'm not doing that. But you can't podcast in the dark. No. That'd be bad. Plus, it, it's more fun for us to do it with the window, with the blind up. Sometimes we get to see what the neighbours no are doing. On. True. <laughs> Sometimes we get to see what the neighbours are doing and they are crazy people. That's true. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. How about you? Have you had a sexy week again? <laughs> no more sexy than normal. Okay. No, um, no other than the new laptop. I've just sat up here and sorted that out all week. Really. Cool. I've not really even watched much on you on Netflix this week. Oh, I've watched a couple of things. We can get into that. Should we you, do that first? Uh, are you? I just wanted to check in first and see if you've uh, pulled back your ridiculous opinion that Left Behind wasn't that bad. No, and I've been vilified. <laughs> uh, vilified? Is that a word? It's yes. the word. It's not the right word. Bar- verified? No, not verified. Ross Vil- Cook agreed were, with me, and he said we put it too low in the stream <laughs> table. So whatever that means, it means I was right and you were wrong. Ah, not low enough. <laughs> So what did we put it? We ended up, it ended up fifth from bottom. Yeah. Ross said it should have gone higher up the table than that. So I've uh, he's losing his mind, and so am I. You all are. Oh, you are. I am the beacon <laughs> of sanity in this place. God damn it! Everything's burning down around me. So I'm justified in my opinion on that. That was a bad film. It was a terrible film, but it wasn't as bad as you think it was. <laughs> I really struggled. To it, get was, it, it was bad. It was quite bad. But uh, we've, we've made, should we talk about the decision we've made today? Sure. To talk about the original version of Left Behind <laughs> that was released in 2000. And for a penny. We're going to do a live watch along in Discord. Yeah. So if you want to come into Discord and join, I don't know when yet, we'll discuss. Date TBA. On. Date TBA. Or TBC. Gonna, instead of doing a Patreon bonus episode, we're going to do a live watch along. Yeah. In Discord somehow. I don't know how we're going to do it. Probably we'll have to press play at the same time or something along those lines. Or one of us takes charge and streams it. Yeah. Is that legal? ignore everything i've just said if it's not <laughs> if it is then that's if it's legal then we'll do that if it's not then we will do that but don't tell anybody yes cool sounds good and so yeah if you want to come we'll, join us in the discord we'll see how that goes and then maybe we'll do something for the part two and three yeah definitely uh, well, we i, maybe I we'll think having sort of a sort of, of yeah semi-regular watch along with the uh 
with the Discord crew could, could be, be good fun. Could be a laugh. Definitely. Um, yeah. We'll I'm get a date it. in the diary. We'll talk about it. We'll put it out on the socials. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there. And we can all have a nice, lovely chat mm. about why this could be better than Nicolas Cage's version. I, according to IMDb, it's better. So yeah. hopefully it's better. But it, it'll be a laugh even if it's shit. Exactly. So, so we'll let you know the date of when we're going to do that. But come along and join the Discord. I'll put the link in the bottom of the show notes. Just literally just press that. And if you've not got the app, it'll download it. And if you have got it, you'll just join the server. Sweet. Straight away. So yeah, that's the plan. Have we got any other plans? I've done some video shit on Instagram. Have you been looking at that? Yeah, I saw. They look, they look all right, don't they? They do. So you've got like some animation and everything. Yeah, there's like <laughs> animated adverts and stuff for the show. It didn't take me that long either, so I'm going to do a lot more. Okay. So come and join us over on the Instagram, BOTS underscore podcast, and uh, you'll see some cool animated shit now. Plenty of ways you can interact yeah, with we'll the just show. Chat to, we'll chat to anybody, won't we? Sure will. Shall we do Netflix news or should we do Top of the Stream? Uh, let's do Top of the Stream. Oh, well, I haven't watched anything. I've okay, so we'll, we'll do it quickly. I've, I'm still doing Superstore. Nearly finished the first season. Of what do you think? Now. I love it. It's so you much got, fun. You got into the swing of it. There was now. a great episode where a man died on a sofa. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it shouldn't be funny, but it's really funny and it really made me laugh. Yeah, so it's a really it's a really good show. It is a really it, good show. It, it kind of like, first few, I remember watching it the first few episodes and um, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. A lot of these people seem very annoying. Yeah. And then they just sort of Grow on hook you. you in and quite grow quickly on you. grow on you, don't they? Um, yeah, it's great. I'm enjoying that. I've actually stopped watching Atypical to watch Superstar. Okay. And to be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to go back to it. I can understand I've, that. I, I find every I character in it a little really bit. unlikable. Yeah. Like all of them, except for the main guy, yeah. who's great, but the rest of them are really not very nice people. Yeah. So I don't I, know. I, I do get that. I may not. I may go back to it. I may not. Okay. But we'll see. Excellent. But yeah, I don't think I've watched anything else. That's right. That's allowed. I didn't. No, I didn't see any films over the weekend. I didn't. Sorry, I I've watched anything. Just because I'm a bit behind, so mine aren't really new things. Mine are kind of a bit of an update on stuff we've mentioned before. Okay. So I have finished the Kevin Smith Masters of the Universe. Series. Oh, have you? I've finally watched the last two episodes. And I really enjoyed it. Good. I thought they were the strongest two. The last two. Oh, excellent! I and will go back to that one. And I thought the ending was awesome. Didn't see it coming. I can see why all the forty-year-old he-men neckbeards are really angry. Oh, really? Is it that? Is it that? <laughs> yeah, Desi- divisive. I came away from it not being a massive fan of Masters of the Universe and remembering it as a really corny, cheesy, yeah, uh, cartoon from from when I was little. Thinking, fair play, Smith. You've done something different here, <laughs> and I'm really interested to see where it goes. Good. I, I, that's excited me. I will get back onto yeah. that then. I've still only seen those first two. Yeah. So. The king of the neckbeards has angered the neckbeards. <laughs> yeah. Ke- Kevin Smith is the king of the neckbeards, isn't he? How dare he do something different <laughs> than... Didn't every He-Man episode used to end with them all standing around going, ha, 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 the yeah. moral is, blah, 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 blah. don't so. do drugs so. look before you cross the street, all that sort of stuff. So like Scooby-Doo always had the big reveal yeah. at the end. Yeah. The He-Man used to have the big moral message. Plus, it's only half the series that's dropped. Yeah, so, true. you know, why do we have to be so judgy? Yeah, just enjoy it. Yeah, if you don't enjoy good. it, just don't watch it. Yeah. The originals are still out there. Just go and watch them instead. Yeah, go and find them, you yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> Anything also, else? Also, yeah. Now, I know we've just talked about like how <laughs> I seem to... Usually it's you that is really contrary. Yeah, okay. And we seem to have just had a conversation about how everyone else like left behind more than me. Yeah. Well, I watched Jungle Cruise at the weekend. <laughs> yeah. And... All I heard is how much fun it is. Yeah, it's great fun. And how everyone's really good. Yeah, it's it? awesome. I didn't like it. <laughs> Why? I thought it was... That's the first time, first person I've heard that didn't like Jungle Cruise. I thought it was really derivative. Really? I, I thought it was just watching Pirates of the Caribbean with like ghosts, sailors and... Yeah. And They don't have the monopoly over ghost sailors. Yeah, but it was just... I didn't think it was anything original in it. I didn't think any of the leads were very... I thought The Rock just phoned it in. Really? Yeah, I, I just... I I'm did really not, surprised I, by this. I, Are you okay? I had quite high expectations. <laughs> I suppose, I know, yeah, there is that. Everybody's been bigging it up for weeks now. And I didn't hate like, it, but I came away thinking, what's all the fuss about? Uh, that Big really style. surprised I thought you'd be really into that. Yeah, me too. I'm really surprised by that. 
Yeah. Interesting. It, it didn't raise much of a chuckle for me, put it that way. I loved it. I thought, I don't know. I just thought it was great. It just reminded me of the 90s and now, like, <laughs> 90s family film. But I feel I've seen that. He did Jumanji. Yeah. And that was great. So just this is the same. Yeah, but so? <laughs> Is it once good? Just am I it am I wrong for expecting yeah. something a you bit different? Definitely, it was just the same as Jumanji and Pirates of the Caribbean, just kind of mixed in one, and felt like I've, I felt like I'd seen this movie before without having ever seen this movie before. That's a fair criticism, I suppose, but it doesn't. But that doesn't bother me. I liked the nostalgia feeling of it, even though it was new. Okay, okay, you miserable bastard. Let's move Fine. on. <laughs> Maybe I'm having a miserable week. You must be. It's since Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage has ruined you for films. Yeah. You said he would. I need a reset. You said t- you text me after the film and said you don't ever want to watch any more films ever again. And yeah, now I you've, did. Now you've watched and I watched it. one and I didn't and like it. You didn't it. like it, so you've been ruined. <laughs> it broke me. Bro- Nicolas Cage has broken you for films. <laughs> right, shall we get on to some news? Or have you watched anything else? No, that's that's all I wanted to mention, I think. Let's do the news. Uh, let's that's start. News jingle, did you <laughs> no, like I, I like it. You just just record that. You can sing the jingle. Let's cool. start with the biggest news: the surprise Spider-Man trailer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there was a surprise Spider-Man trailer. Well, because it leaked. It leaked, and then a few hours later, it came it out. It was official. Yeah. What did you think of it? I mean, I'm a bit confused, but it looks great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as soon as Doctor Strange turns up, you're like, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Because I have yeah. never idea what he's doing. I have no idea what he's up to at any point. So I know it's very difficult to judge from, what, two minutes and 30 seconds of a trailer. Yeah. But it definitely got me intrigued. I was like, oh, I want to see this. <laughs> because it, cause my instant reaction was, why the hell would Doctor Strange agree to do this spell? Well, yeah, there is that. After he's warned not to. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't we'll know. see. But we'll, we'll find out. I'm it was sure a great we'll tease, out. I thought. Yeah, it was. It's a really good teaser. It's a really good trailer. Yeah. I, I really liked you. Did you see when the trailer leaked? Tom Holland tweeted, Oh, God, have I? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's really infamous <laughs> for spoiling things, isn't he? He's like, he really thought he'd done it, but he hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, someone had got into his cloud. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I love those films anyway. I think he's an amazing Spider Man. And I'm really looking forward it's to it. It's going to be a fun time. It is going to be a fun time. Uh, it's like the return of proper Marvel films. The it? most viewed trailer of all time in its first. Yeah, I saw that. It beat Endgame. Yeah. That's surprising as well, isn't it? So People are clinging for Marvel films. They just want them, don't they? <laughs> for some reason. Well, it's been a it's been a while. Well, we had Black Widow, didn't we? Yeah. And you've so, got Shang-Chi next week. I'm lo- really looking forward to that. Um, I think that's going to be something a little bit special. But I guess the old favourites. Spider-Man, isn't it? Hit harder. Most most people who their favourite superhero is a lot of them would say Spider Man. They would. That's true. So yeah, yeah. Well, is that? Isn't, it's not actually that long to wait. So seventeenth of December, that will roll round it, quicker than you could imagine. It certainly will. This year has flown by. I know. We're nearly at the end of the fifth season. Another season's gone. I know. yeah, That's insane, just insane. It really is. Where okay. would you like me to click? Let's go straight in with the big guns. The top one. Yeah. I'm excited for this. I know, like me, you refresh every day potato news today. Of course I do. Everybody does, don't they? (laughs) What is going on? What is this? (laughs) A restaurant in New York has been verified in the Guinness Book of Records for having the most expensive fries on planet Earth. The most expensive fries? Yeah. Like French fries? Yeah. Okay. Uh, The restaurant is called Serendipity 3. Okay, what happened to the first two? (laughs) let's not dig into that too much in <laughs> case, uh, in case uh, it's not a good answer. Yes, go. So um, $200 for a plate of fries. And there's not that many there, is there? I'm you just looking at that picture, picture and they, they look really unappetizing. Yeah, I don't know if it's a, a bad picture, picture but they don't look very nice. <laughs> Would you like to know what's in them? 100%. So they are called the creme de la creme pomme frite. Okay. Chippewek potatoes. Never heard of them. They are blanched in vinegar and champagne. Okay. okay. They are then fried in pure goose fat. Okay. Twice. Okay. Sprinkled with edible gold, seasoned with truffle salt and truffle oil, and served on a crystal plate with an orchid thin sliced truffles and a Mornay cheese dip. The sauce is also infused with truffles. And there you go. $200 I like for a the small paint plate of chips it comes on a crystal plate i'm like you can't i'm not eating that you You're can't charge me that. extra because it's on it <laughs> yeah give it give it me in a basket the morning the cheese sauce sounds nice but the chips are like chip they'll just look like chips yeah or fries i like chips fries they get me wrong Same. how good can 
how can how good can you get them? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, how good can they be? What is the upper echelon? Is a chip going to change my what's, life? What's the vinegar going to do in the champagne? I mean, it's not, uh, no, I'm not convinced by it. I'd like to try them, but I'm never going It's a record to. breaker. It's important potato news. Yeah, true. I've got it another is. piece of potato news. Okay. Just a bonus piece of potato news. Go for it. A guy uh, went out for dinner with his friend. Yeah. This is, this is uh, I was reading this earlier this week, a guy over in the States, and they, they split the bill. Right. Um, But they did it afterwards, so his mate paid, Yeah. and then they, they sorted it out with a you know tran- transfer, transfer later on yeah and uh this guy's mate said to him oh you you had a couple of my chips didn't you what a couple of my fries he's like yeah yeah three or four he's like oh, i'm just going to add uh 47 cents to your half of the bill just to cover the three chips no he didn't it's <laughs> so honestly i was reading this in the news <laughs> why is that in the news for a start <laughs> because of how <laughs> insane it is I guess. it is insane it's one of them like am i the asshole first. yes <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> and he was like, I wouldn't have minded so much, but he offered them to me. He said, do you want any of these? I'm not going to eat them. <laughs> so well, that's a gift. Yeah. People. Are, what is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? You see why I'm miserable? People like this about <laughs> charging you for a I, gift I, of chips. The worst thing about going out for a dinner is when you have to split the bill at the end. <laughs> it's just like, especially being single and going out with couples and stuff. Sure. And then you're like, how do we split it? I was like, just cut it evenly. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. You're a generous man. I am. I'll just pay for all of it. <laughs> I've just read on this website that we were just talking about these french fries. So the restaurant also claims the most expensive burger and the most expensive ice cream sundae. Okay. I'm much more interested in the ice cream sundae. Yeah, me too. I want a picture of that. $1,000 for an $1, ice cream sundae. $1,000 for... What's in that? We'll, um, we'll make, have a look at that off there. Yeah, I think so we we'll, need we'll, to. We can I'd, Google serendipity. I'd, I'd eat that. <laughs> I love ice cream. I'd expect a lot of ice cream for $1,000. Same. I thought it was going to be made out of like... I don't know, peacock or peacock, unicorn. Peacock milk. Yeah. Can you milk a peacock? I'd, I've never tried. <laughs> sounds sounds difficult. <laughs> Doesn't sound easy, does it? <laughs> right. So that's the most. That's the important potato news. Nothing to do uh, with Netflix, but no. it's humorous and fun. Okay. Next, should we do a Netflix news? Yeah, let's start properly. This one. Uh, yeah, Netflix has released the first images from its much anticipated adaptation of Cowboy Bebop. Oh, I've seen these. Yeah, it does look good. It drops on November the 19th. Ten episodes. Wow. Ten episodes. No okay. trailer yet, but I would imagine it is not far away because you're only sort of, what, eight weeks away from that. Yeah, pretty much. it's not far, is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... You always think, don't you, Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop, Akira. They're, they're all sort of key animes that have had various adaptations in the works for years and years and years so it'll be really interesting to see if netflix get this right john cho is the lead i like john cho in this um yeah so not long to wait it's not long to wait that's quite exciting i don't know anything of the story of cowboy bebop they're bounty hunters are they okay yes. very stylish the picture the picture looks really cool i like that picture so oh there's some more pictures let's have a look at them quickly there's one more picture it's just john cho <laughs> it's just a, a picture of john cho in a suit What's next? This one. Sure. Charlie Brooker. Oh, awesome. I love Charlie Brooker. Has announced a new show coming to Netflix. It is a one-off special. So last year he did Death to 2020, you'll remember. He did. That was interesting. was fun. around New Year's, Christmas, New Year, wasn't it last year? Yeah. This year. Last year? This year. I Early this year, I think. One of the others. Well, his next hour-long special is going to be hosted by Rob Lowe. Oh, wow. And it is called Attack of the Hollywood Clichés. King of Where them. they will be dissecting classic films uh, alongside a load of celebrity guests all oh, right um the synopsis reads this is a one-off special featuring some of the most famous films in history as hollywood a-listers screenwriters academics and criti- critics guide us through the funny weird and controversial cliches which appear on our cinema screens oh. so i think they are talking Things so the the examples given are walking away from explosion, females running in high heels, and the Wilhelm scream, which is the same scream used in loads of like ninety percent of all movies. Yeah, um, yeah, that is coming some point quite soon, September the twenty eighth. That's like really soon. That is really soon. A month's time. That's it. Sounds interesting because it doesn't sound like the sort of thing that Charlie Brooker would normally do. It also sounds like quite a lot to squeeze into an hour. It does, yeah. Because Charlie Brooker normally does weird, like, 
brain messing stuff. Yeah. But that sounds like it's just going to be like a Talking Heads Channel 5 type documentary, does almost, doesn't it? That'd be, that'd be fun. Do you think Netflix like, oh, come on, you've got to do something this yeah, year. Yeah, like, right, we'll just talk about some cliches. Just get my friends God. and do this. Yeah. Do you want to hear about Tadum? Tadum? Yeah. <laughs> Close. Definitely. It's Netflix's first virg- virtual global fan event. Oh. On September the 25th. Do you know what it's called? Tadum. Because mm, of the Tadum noise. Correct. Netflix's sting. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, it will showcase exclusive news and first looks at original content. Tudum is named after the sound users here when they press play on Netflix. We did a feature once on where that sound come from. Do you remember? We did, yeah. Do you remember what it was? You don't do it. No. <laughs> it's in... Um... Oh, no, I do. What's it it's called? It's from uh, Kevin Spacey yeah. in House of Cards. How, yeah, he punches, he bangs the desk twice yeah. and it makes that Tudum noise. Yeah. And that's where it comes from. Because that was their first original TV show, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it says the event will feature panels and conversations with the creators and stars of Stranger Things, Emily in Paris, The Witcher, The Crown, Cobra Kai, Bridgerton, and some upcoming films, Red Notice, Don't Look Up, Extraction. That's not an upcoming film. No, nor is the old guy. Um, now, I think this is good. Uh, I d- I'm just not quite sure what the difference is between Tudum and Geek Tweet. I was going to say that. Which it was sounds... a few months ago. Yeah, it sounds exactly the same as what Geek Tweet was. Uh and most of this is also going to be it's going to be on YouTube rather than Netflix itself, which again is a bit weird. It's mental. I don't understand why they do that. Just have a live stream on Netflix. Yeah, virtual live stream of the three hour to Dumb event starts at twelve p.m. nine a.m. twelve p.m. EDT. What's EDT? Yes, <laughs> nine a.m. PDT, and it doesn't say when in GMT. Uh, it was just a bit. Because Geek Week didn't really end up showing off a lot, did it? No, they had a few teasers, didn't they? But there was yeah. not a lot to it. So hopefully this one will be a bit better. Yeah. So, yeah, September the 25th. Hey, where's that Netflix statue? I like that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a statue of the Netflix logo somewhere. And I quite like it. Presumably in Hollywood somewhere. I would assume so. Cool. This one? Sure. I know you love your reality shows. Oh, I do. <laughs> and we talked a bit about how you can apply for some of these. By sending your video into Netflix a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, when we had yeah. Ross on the show? We did. Well, Netflix has announced three new reality shows, and you tell me if you would fancy any of these. Okay. Maybe you could you could try and get on one. Um, <laughs> they're quite different. Uh, oh, the okay. first one, yeah, Snowflake Mountain. That sounds right on my street. <laughs> Apparently a funny, warm-hearted reality show which takes a bunch of clueless kiddles who are not living their, to their full potential and puts them through their paces at a wilderness survival retreat to try and kickstart them into standing on their own two feet. I feel like that has been a programme before. Sounds like something Bear Grylls would do. Yeah. Yeah. Like sending bad kids off to... Jungles. Yeah. But uh, that is coming. It was filmed in the Lake District, so it's it's British set. Okay. Snowflake Mountain. I um, hate the term snowflake. Me too. 100% hate it. But I would describe myself as a clueless kid old. <laughs> and I think my mother would also describe me as that. So maybe I could apply for it. Yeah, okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> if we'll you're into see, that If you're into, yeah. I think, I think I can potentially see all three of... Well, I'm not saying they will all be big hits, but I think all three of them going from their synopsis could be if people cotton onto them netflix do well with their reality shows the second one is dance monsters that sounds more like your sort of thing than mine a large scale dancing competition with a monster twist are these going to be people dancing dressed as monsters i mean pretty much it does say it will be more uh visual effects rather than costumes oh right so motion capture facial recognition competitors will transform into transform into a lovable and fantastical dance monster that will come to life in front of a panel of judges and an audience. So <laughs> it does kind of just sound like the masked dancer, dancer but... But with CGI. Not me- wearing a massive, sweaty, gremlin costume. It describes itself as hugely ambitious. Uh, well... With a heartfelt journey at its core. You wouldn't want a power cut, I suppose. Well, no, that's true. So, yeah. Nah. So if neither of those were for you, how about dated and related... <laughs> that's is that some sort of incest dating show <laughs> no no i mean not quite I, oh, although not you quite. never you never know where things could could go with this sort of thing i suppose okay it says imagine having to think about your sibling dating how they flirt how they treat their partners 
and what their signature moves are. In this brand new reality dating series, pairs of siblings will be seeing each other's love life up close and personal as they search for the one together. So basically, you've got to be your brother or sister's wingman and help them. I'm not convinced by that. Pick the right partner. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that's up my... Uh... No, my brother and your sister have both got separate partners. They're not together. They've both <laughs> got separate partners. Partners? partners? So we don't have to do that one. They're already in happy relationships. No, you? but... Um, that sounds horrendous. Yeah, it does sound pretty... <laughs> that, that one, that one will be the one that hits, though. Yeah. That's yeah, the one all the girls right. at work are going to be talking about. Yeah. That's the office one. That's the one everybody's going to be on about in the office for days on end. <laughs> well, that'll give you something to look forward to. Can't wait. <laughs> it doesn't say when any of them are coming, does it? No, it doesn't. But they're all coming at some point. This one? Sure. We start need to start to think about what comes next for us after we have finished our watch along feature with the island. Okay. So I am just. <laughs> We're not allowed on this website. My browser. It's fine. We don't need on. the. We don't need the. Article, you sure? Yeah, yeah. So I have um, spotted a series that could be an option for us. Okay. It's called. It's coming to Netflix soon. It's called No One Dies in Scans. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Norwegian. Yeah, probably. Scans. And it is basically about a woman that moves to this small town and uh, finds out everyone's a vampire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a bit like Salem's Lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, come with a bit of sort of comedy horror potential. Uh, there is a there's a cool trailer on there. Check it out if you get the time. I'm not allowed. Uh, My browser won't let me on their website. <laughs> so it's got ads on it. It had quite a couple of quite decent reviews, but obviously it's it's Norwegian. It's going to be down at the bottom. We've already done a Norwegian. I know that's a what Norwegian I show on well, the. Uh, but we've not really done anything on like vampires or anything, have we? So no, it's one to consider. Yeah, it's, yeah we've, we've got to survive to the, the island first. How far through with that are we? We've done just an episode four. Yeah, we think we've got, got three, three left. left. So we're going to be quite close to the end of the series. Yeah, they're going so to come. So we, we may have to... I don't know. We'll work. We'll out. figure it out. We'll maybe do we'll maybe a couple wait. of one-offs or something. Yeah. Maybe we'll just wait the last couple until of weeks. the start of season two. Yeah. Do you like Turkey? The food or the country? The country. Yes. Oh, I've been to Turkey. Right. Uh, <laughs> what? Is this bad? Well, yeah, it is quite bad. Uh, Netflix. <laughs> hate in the internet. You'll be fine. <laughs> I read a thing today, sorry to, to no, it's interrupt. Fine. The government are talking about getting rid of this cookie consent pop-up okay. on every website because that was an EU thing and we don't need to do that anymore. So they've employed a man to see if we can get rid of it. <laughs> that was his, that was his job, I think. So hopefully all these do you want to accept the cookies pop-ups will disappear at some point. That's like the least annoying pop-up. It's the ones where you've got, you've got to sign in. And a million adverts that yeah. I can't... Like this one here. Literally can't Claim read. this offer. Bloomberg. We're on Bloomberg's website. We've got a big orange banner at the bottom <laughs> saying we can claim an offer to where we can go on this website for 37p a week. I don't want to. Anyway, what what's happened in Turkey? Well, this is quite interesting. Okay. And, and I will give Netflix some props here. Uh, maybe they're not as evil a corporation <laughs> as we sometimes <laughs> think because they were forced to stop filming and, and in fact, completely cancel a it, their first turkish drama okay uh, it was called if only and they cancelled it last year because they were under pressure from the turkish culture ministry because they were asked to erase a gay character from the storyline no of this show that they were creating wow. um the show was written by a turkish screenwriter called is yurenk uh, well the show's now back on okay but they've transplanted the whole thing to spain <laughs> Rewritten it. Fuck you, Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Set in Spain now. Spanish characters. It's going to air in 190 countries, <laughs> including Turkey. <laughs> I just, I, if I was going to do it, in, I'd just make it extra gay in Turkey. Yeah. Just put, just put rainbows all over the credits and shit. The gay character yeah. remains in the script. Good. Uh, it is only it's a supporting role as it was in the original. Irma Correa, who's another screenwriter on it, says that we're not telling a Spanish or a Turkish story. It's a universal one. We have worked to reflect what we see as an open and plural society in which everyone will feel represented. Good on. It has got a new title. It is now called If I Had Known. Okay. Same plot and same structure as the original Turkish version. So it tells the story of a woman called Emma. Entering her 30s, she's bored after 10 years of marriage. A supernatural event sends her back in time, allowing her to inhabit her younger body and rewrite her life. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> well, I was on board with it until you just read that synopsis. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> Everything doesn't have to be for everyone. No, it's true. I, I like that they've done that, though. That's, uh, that's yeah. good that Netflix have stood up for the uh, the community there. Exactly. Like yeah. Take take the money out of their place. Probably so props not going to get behind it. Yeah. Well done, Netflix. So that was an interesting one, so I wanted to bring that up. It was. How do you feel about Jack Whitehall? I've already slagged him off once this episode, <laughs> and now I'm going to feel like I'm about to do it again. I'm not a huge Jack Whitehall fan, uh, but I thought he was all right in Jungle Cruise, I must admit. The upcoming season of, fifth season of Travels with My Father, his documentary he does with his dad. Yeah. Travelling around, having a free holiday every year <laughs> for the last five years. Yeah. Uh, it's coming to an end. The final series starts on September the 14th, they travelled around the UK because they couldn't go anywhere else because of COVID. That's fair. <laughs> His dad is like old as well, isn't he? He's like mid-80s. Yeah. So maybe they just don't can't do it anymore. Have you watched, I've, I think I've, I've watched never. one or two episodes. I, I didn't. I was pretty shocked when I saw that this was the fifth series. I've just had exactly that same reaction <laughs> when I've just seen it. No, I've never seen an episode of it. I feel like I'd probably enjoy it, but no, I've not seen it. Like I, said, I'm not, I feel like I'd, I'd, I might enjoy some of the clips, but... I, it's not something I feel I could necessarily sit down and watch because I just think I would be annoyed by the end of it. Yeah, I think you're right. Because it's just two quite posh entitled people gathering around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. But it's done well. Go. Everybody seems to love it. You've got He's one of those divisive comedians, isn't he? You either love him or you hate him. Yeah. I wouldn't say I hated him, but I also wouldn't say I loved him. I can't remember what this one is. <laughs> okay. I can remember what this one is. Okay. We love a bit of detective work, don't we? Yeah. Now... There is a long in development Super Mario animated movie. Right. Um allegedly arriving in about twenty twenty two. Right. Possibly okay. twenty twenty three. Um it's being animated by uh Illumination, who are the same company behind Minions, Despicable Me. Right. All that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh co produced by Nintendo. We've talked before about how protective they are of their very, properties. Very, and was very. it just last week we were talking about like things getting canned because they weren't happy about? Mm. It was one or two yeah, episodes. It was, yeah, ago. a couple of episodes. Well, ago, I, think. I love a good rumor, and yeah. someone's done some great detective work here because there is a hot rumor that this Super Mario animated movie is going to be directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Yelenik. They are the creators. Of Teen Titans Go. Oh, right. Okay. That does really well, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, the movie I watched not that long ago on Netflix, and it's really funny. Is it? Yeah. I've really heard funny. really good things about it. Now, do you want to know how this rumour started? Absolutely. So, a Twitter user mm-hmm. happened to be on the LinkedIn profile of an Illumination animator. Okay. And on said LinkedIn profile, it says, currently working on the Mario movie directed by... Oh, right, okay. So this guy's leaked it in his LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Aaron Horvath and Michael Yelenik. There has been no press release. There is, it's been deathly quiet on this movie. But someone has done this detective work and spotted it. And uh, Somebody seems to be working on it. Yeah, and those two are apparently directing it. So <laughs> I've just read the top comment on the story and... The neckbeards are already up in arms about it. Really? Why? It says, oh God, please no, whelp. If this is the case, my hopes for this movie just died. <laughs> Plus, if they make Mario a plumber, well, how about all you can hear bathroom joke? I don't understand that. Mario is a plumber. <laughs> Look, just... There's 73 comments on that. So um, we're not reading them. them. Uh, and it's, it's a Nintendo website as well. Nintendo fans are crazy. I love Team Titans Go, so if, go for it, lads. Go for it, why not? We appear to be at the end of your news section. Done. I've got a list. Oh, lovely. Um, it's been a bit of a crazy week and I haven't had a chance to read this list. Oh, So we're going to live it. react to this list. Netflix have announced... Do you remember at the start of this year they said they were going to release an original movie every week? Sure. So you'd have 52 original Netflix movies. Yes. They have recently made the announcement that before the end of this year they will release 40 more. <laughs> 40 Netflix movies are coming. Yeah. Um, and I've got a list of them. But do you want to pick some out and I'll go on IMDb and see if we can get some information on them. Definitely. That. Any of them striking your bone? <laughs> bone, bone, My bone is being struck by, uh, by. I think have we talked about Worth with Michael Keaton before? Yeah, that's the uh, September the eleventh one that yeah. we talked about with Ross a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I would like you please to tell me about Night Teeth. Night Teeth. Oh, I will tell you about it because that sounds horrific. 
I think we've spoken about it before. Have we? Yes. I you remember when like we did this feature at the start of the year? And I think that was on the list then. It's got Alexander Ludwig in it and Sidney Sweeney. And it's about a college student moonlighting as a chauffeur picks up two mysterious women for a night of party up in across LA. But when he uncovers their bloodthirsty intentions and their dangerous shadowy underworld, he must fight to stay alive. I think you've spoken with someone I've else I've seen that. that picture before. <laughs> so, when that is that coming? That is... October the 20th. That's not that long away. What about Night Books with Kristen Ritter? Fancy that one? Sure. I'm all about the night things. Kristen Ritter and Lydia Jewett will star in Night Books, which comes out on September the 15th. Yeah, Night Books follows Alex, a boy obsessed with scary stories who is imprisoned by an evil young witch in a contemporary New York City apartment. Looks like kid drama. A fantasy type thing. Cool poster. Oh, sweet. That is a cool poster. Anything else? Hopefully there is, because this is, this is like the main bit of this episode. Can <laughs> you please have a look at Tick, Tick, Boom? Tick, Tick, not Rick. Tick, Rick, Boom. Tick, Rick, Boom. Andrew Garfield is in Tick, Tick, Boom with Bradley Whitford, Vanessa Hudgens and Alexandra Shipp. Ooh. Directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Oh, Interestingly. he's a busy man. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Uh, on the cusp of his 30th birthday, a promising young theatre composer navigates love, friendship and the pressures of life as an artist in New York City. Okay. I presume Andrew Garfield isn't playing the nearly 30-year-old when Andrew Garfield is nearly 40. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about Spider-Man like that. He's only 17. He's not Spider-Man. <laughs> what about Diana the Musical? What's that? Because it's coming. <laughs> I have a feeling it's not about Diana Ross. Oh, it's a live recording of the Broadway musical Diana the Musical based on the life of Princess Diana formed at the Long Acre Theatre Theater in New York City in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, there were other people that you're allowed to make things about. Nah, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the obsession. No, nor me, to be honest. It was it was funny because when she was alive, everybody hated her. <laughs> and as soon as she died, she was the queen of our hearts. Don't want to speak ill of the dead, though. Uh, no, I don't. I'm sure she was fine. I just I don't Katie need Seagal's in that one. to know all about her all the time. No, let's look at that one then. Hypnotic. We like Katie Seagal, don't we? I love Kate Seagal. She's got a few things coming to her. Midnight Mass is coming soon as well, isn't it? She's yes. in that. Coming soon, release date October 2021, according to IMDb. These have it as October. Katie Segal, Jason O'Mara, Dulé Hill. Oh, I love Dulé oh. Hill. Do you? Yeah, he's been from Psych and the West Wing. Well, he's in it as well. Brilliant. A young woman seeking Sold. self-improvement enlists the help of a renowned hypnotherapist, but after a handful of intense sessions, she discovers unexpected and deadly consequences. Ah, always deadly consequences. Especially when Katie Segal's involved. <laughs> Doesn't usually end well, does it? There's a, quite a lot of shit coming. Yeah, there's some big wood movers as well. Obviously, the couple of the big ones you got uh, Red Notice, November yeah. 12th. That's Dwayne Johnson, Brian Reynolds, Gal Gadot. Yeah. There's, um, is it called Don't Look Up? That's the big Christmas movie. That's yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Um, I would like you to look at No One Gets Out Alive. No One Gets Out Alive. No One Gets Out Alive, Mark Comenchacha. Menchacha? Menchacha? Uh, Christina Rodlow, Victoria Adlock, and David Barrera. Um, appears to be Spanish, maybe? Sure. No, no, I say it's Spain, but it's English. An immigrant in search of the American dream who, after being forced to take a room in a boarding house, finds herself in a nightmare she can't escape. They seem to be going for f- horrors and thrillers. Yeah. All of these are horrors and thrillers, aren't they? I want to know what stuck together is. It just makes me think of that uh, Farrelly Brothers movie. Yeah. Is that Matt stuck Damon? On, stuck on you. Stuck on you. Yeah. Is it Matt Damon? Yeah, and Greg Kinnear, was yeah. it? Yeah. Danny Boone, Ivan Attal are in this took together. The streets of Paris are silent and empty while many flee the capital. Seven families experience lockdown in a building on the Rue de Limante. Did you hear, did you hear that then? I said that right, I think. Mm-hmm. A cafe owner who reuses her pear alcohol as a hydro alcoholic gel. A geeky Zoom sport. <laughs> this is just words. A geeky <laughs> Zoom, Zoom sports coach who gets fatter by the week. His fiance. A singer who is seven months pregnant and doesn't want to go into hospital alone. A self-made man who desperately wants to be as smart as his eight-year-old son. 
Three months of lockdown, joy, fear, humour and drama. Seven families in one building who don't really know each other, meet each other, grow closer and are each other's throats and then reconcile again. Oh, it's a lockdown movie. We're going to get loads of those. Yeah. I don't know who wrote that, but they... Uh, can't they, write. They can't write. Exactly. It sounds interesting. It's on for two hours and five minutes. There's a lot of Christmas films coming. Standard. They say there's a lot of films coming, 40 films coming by the end of the year, but the majority of them are coming in <laughs> December. <laughs> So, Christmas-wise, where do we start here? So, the first one appears to be a film called The Boy Called Christmas. That's a terrible name for a boy. <laughs> Unless it's Oi, good. Christmas, your dinner's ready. <laughs> Get in the house. Christmas dinner. <laughs> Every um, day is his Christmas dinner. <laughs> that stars Jim Broadbent, Sally Hawkins, and Kristen Wig. Wig or Wig? Wig. Wig. Um, Wig. And then you've got A Castle for Christmas coming. That stars Brooke Shields and Carrie Alwes. This is the guy from Saw. Yeah. Um, the Princess Switch Free. Vanessa Hudgens' new film. Switch Hard with a Vengeance. The Power of the Dog. Stars Benedict Cumberbatch, Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst. The Power of the Dog. That's an interesting name for a film, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, Short the, Shaw, Sean the Sheep, The Flight Before Christmas. That's coming December the 3rd, excluding UK. Why what? are we not getting that? Probably because it was probably, I bet it's coming out in the cinema. Yeah, And it'll probably. be like a, take yeah. your kids to this for Christmas. Yeah, it will be, won't it? Uh, the Unforgivable starring Sandra Bullock's also coming in December. I don't know if that's a Christmas film. Doesn't sound like one. The Hand of God sounds like a film about Maradona. <laughs> uh, don't Look Up starring Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio. Is that the one that's got loads of famous people? Yes, in? they're astronauts, aren't they? Yes. Uh, single All the Way. That's got to be a Christmas rom-com. Yeah, December TBZ. Uh, Back to the Outback with Eric Banner and Isla Fisher. I hate Isla Fisher. Why? I don't know. I just don't like her very much. <laughs> Uh, the Lost Daughter with Olivia Coleman and Dakota Johnson. We talked about that last week, didn't we? We did, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot coming in December. I keep going to use my mouth. It's not that. There's a lot coming in December and there's a lot of crazy thrillers and horrors coming before the end of them by the looks of it. Melissa McCartney's got a film coming. Uh, more, give it, give it a few weeks more and a few of them will be uh, falling to the bottom of the stream, I would have yeah. thought. Jake Gyllenhaal. Alfie Allen's in 90. The Harder They Fall stars so Jonathan Majors, Idris Elba, Lakeith Stanfield. I've seen the trailer for that. It came King. out this week. Loads of people. In yeah, it looks good. Tessa Thompson's in one. Ha- we've talked about that one a few Passing. weeks ago. Yeah. Halle Berry's in Bruised. That's coming. Gillian Anderson and Richard E. Grant in Robin Robin. I think that's an animation. Oh, is it? Okay. About a Robin. Robin. 14 Peaks, Nothing is Impossible documentary. That sounds like it's about climbing, maybe. Seven Prisoners. Uh, plenty for you to get stuck that's... into. Don't, I think, look, don't, don't look, look up. It's not about astronauts, it's about dogs. <laughs> dogs can't look up. <laughs> exactly. Don't look up, I think, is the big one I'm looking forward to in that. I think. The cast of that is incredible, and I'm excited for I it. I think it's Red Notice for me, having just slagged off the rock as well. <laughs> <laughs> Red Notice will be great. They're the, they're the big two before the end of the year, I think. I don't think that we'll be touching them on our show very soon. No, some of these look there's like no they, danger of that. Some of these look like they might end up there. In a couple of years, we'll be talking about Tick, Tick, Boom with Andrew Garfield, I think. <laughs> cool. How long have we been going? It's oh, a, ages. It's a song by The Hives, isn't it? That's what it makes me... <laughs> let's get out of it. Right, let's do... Let's, should we extend our rods? If we must. We mm. must. We must. Here it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Island, season four. Episode four. Episode four, not season four. Season one and only. Season one and only, episode four. What did you think? I'll start on a positive. It was better than episode three. Yes. It was better than episode three. Um, Quite a lot happened in this episode. I'm sure it did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that I was even remotely interested in happened but it's quite a lot of stuff it's like episode three didn't happen it was I, I, none I, of them believed her yeah that they were all in a simulation like i said last week they're being played in a random order i'm sure of it <laughs> i don't think we're watching these show these episodes in order so none of them believed chase and then two people turned up oh my god i hated these two people how bad were they Both just out of nowhere especially she was terrible they they pretended to lie for about 34 seconds if that does it like be like oh yeah we've come from the other isle- other island and yeah. i went ah oh, bollocks no she's right it is all a simulation <laughs> and we're just gonna hit we're just here to keep you in check and they still didn't believe no until they killed one of the lesser yeah. known members of our crew it's so heavy-handed and when and they were like so uh so what what's your what are your names new people and they were like well bonnie clyde <laughs> and they were like oh because obviously they've all lost their memory yeah, they don't know they like, don't have any memory oh that kind of sounds familiar and then, again, two minutes later, someone says... Kate Bosworth just yeah. went, Oh, I know who Bonnie and Clyde are. Yeah. They're outlaws. Why? Does she remember? And then, and then the guy, Bonnie... No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a great one. Yeah, yeah we should, they should have done that. He's like, oh, yeah, well, you're all... You've been giving your memories back. And trust me, when you get them all, 
you're going to fuck each other up. <laughs> so then uh, we got quite a few flashbacks of them getting their memories back, didn't they? Yeah. So one of them's a school shooter. Only look appeared to be a school shooter, yeah. I think. I don't care. No, me neither. They're all, they all seem to be murderers. They all seem to have killed somebody. Why would I care about any of these people? I don't care about any of these people. All I can think about now is that I've got a show and there's a character in it called Clyde. <laughs> and he's not an orangutan. And he's not an orangutan. <laughs> then Chase left because they told Chase to go. Yeah. Because nobody likes her, so she's like, right, I'm going. She went to that hotel place that they found. From episode one. <laughs> from episode two, oh, yeah, maybe. Well. She found her mum was there, but not there in the dream. Yeah. But, but she'd killed her mum at some point in her life. I'm talking about it. And I just don't give a shit. <laughs> and she, she found a key to a room. She went in, and that's where the episode ended. Yeah. Yeah, there was something in there, but we don't know what. Yeah. Probably a bear or something. Who knows? Polar bear. Polar bear. Uh, <laughs> it's almost now... I've, for the first three episodes, I've compared this uh, this show to Lost because it's a show set on a desert island. You sure. can't not. But now I feel like I'm insulting Lost's legacy by mentioning it because this is the worst TV show I've ever watched. Um, I, I struggle to think of anything worse. It's incoherent. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely nonsense. Um, I, I, I just, yeah, I, I just, I don't want another episode like last week's where we just back. I couldn't give a. If if we come off the island at any point, I'd have to sit through two episodes of wandering around that facility. I'll, that I'll, That's I'll hap- gone. That now. is happening before the end. We'll be definitely getting another episode in that facility. Yeah, that is definitely happening. But the the best bit in this episode, Ross pointed out in the Discord, was that at some point he says, Clyde says to them, "You need to get to the second island," and they're like, "There's a second island," and everyone's <laughs> really surprised. And you can clearly see it. Sure. In the middle of the ocean, not far from where they are. No, you could probably really swim it. And again, Lost had a second island. <laughs> and it's it's ridiculous how they've just stolen weirdest bits from Lost and tried to make oh, it into a show. Also, that guy from episode one who got half eaten by the shark. He's all right now. Pretty much fine. Yeah, can, he's learning to walk it's again. Flesh wound. It's just, yeah. For some reason, he's forgotten how to walk. Huh. But <laughs> And he was like, why would you believe? Because he was like, so none of them believe Chase, but then some of them were starting to come around to it. Yeah. And he was like, even before she came out with this story, you all thought she was crazy. So why do you suddenly start believing her now? And that's when everybody was like, yeah, fuck off, Chase. We don't want to talk to you anymore. We don't like you now. It's it's nuts. We're running out of characters. We've, two, we've lost two in two episodes. That's fine. <laughs> but so hopefully by the end, they'll all be dead. There's only three episodes left. Yeah, we're nearly there. But it's bad, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's much worse than I was expecting. It's completely nonsensical. Yeah, it There's no way it, draw, it brings together. It can't. It, together. it can't. And even if it does... It's not going to be an interesting... Because we know now no, that they're in just... a simulation because they're in prison, yeah. because they're all murderers. And it, yeah. So what else are you telling us? <laughs> we know that. You told us that in episode three. So what else are you going to tell us? It'll be another a, a twist that they'll be going, ah, oh, you never saw that coming. And we'll be like, yeah, yeah we did. it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see it coming because they're all made of ice cream or something. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, yeah. it's just complete nonsense. So we're sticking with it. We've got three more to go. We're on the downhill now. Yeah, we're on. We've, we've passed the hump. Yeah. They're, well, the the group have split now as well. They're in two different camps now, sure. aren't they? So there's maybe... like a village where others live. <laughs> it's, it's almost <laughs> like plagiarism, isn't it? It's crazy. But so yeah, um, we'll stick with it. It's not great, but we watch these things so you guys don't have to. We're troopers, what unless you're a patron, then you have to. Awesome. Then we'll figure something else to watch afterwards, I guess. But like you said earlier, it'll be towards the end of the season, so maybe we'll do like some one-off shows or something, yeah. and then we'll do- we'll start do- a new documentary one. or something. Yeah, something we'll, like we'll work it out. We'll start a new one at the start of season six. Indeed, season six. But we need to complete season five or we'll get on the road to completing season five. So, what's next up in season five? So, if you join us here on this very feed on Thursday, we are talking about an action. Yep. It's just an action movie. It's an action martial arts movie, isn't it? It's called Triple Threat. It is. And this is a who's who of martial arts, <laughs> Did, uh, I have got to say. I mentioned it in the episode as well, but do you know what the American tagline for this film is? No. It is the Expendables without the retirees. Ah, nice. <laughs> nice. So it's like, we're going to give you an Expendables film, but with everybody who's still quite good at what they do. Before, <laughs> before they're all over the hill, there's no uh, Chuck Norris with the Zimmer frame in this there movie. Really is. movie. So yeah, we we talk about it's Thai, Thai Chinese and English, or, sure, to, or American co co collab film. Yeah, is that why it's called Triple Threat? Because it's three different countries represented. <laughs> Who knows? We'll talk about that more in the episode. So yeah, join us back here on Thursday, and we'll talk about Triple Threat with you. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>